Have you ever wondered why you're not able to get the Word of God to work in your life? Well, the wondering stops here and now. In this podcast, we will answer these questions through supernatural revelation of the Word of God as we meditate the Word together. My name is Craig Venn, and this is the Sunday Recap Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another amazing episode of the Sunday Recap Podcast. Good to be with you. My name is Craig. Um, Like I said, uh, this is the Sunday Recap Podcast, where we uh, take time to uh, break down everything that Apostle's been preaching on. So everything he's been ministering on and everything he's been talking about and what he's been talking to us about is stuff that we talk about in this podcast in this on this channel uh we do that so that we can be a blessing to you to help you meditate the word of god you know these these um at the out at the moment there's there's very difficult well not very difficult there's very few um there's very few tools that you can trust that are going to help you with meditating the word of god this uh this particular podcast is is geared towards KBMI people. There's no doubt about that. It's 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 built within the framework of KBMI, um, Kingdom Builders Ministries International, located here in uh, in the Western Cape in the Helderberg Basin. There's a there's a village called Solaris Pass, and our headquarters is based there in that community to serve those people. But then we also have locations in Swelland Dam, um, which is our latest location. Uh, we have a location in Cirrus. Um, we have a location that is birthing now in Robertson. Um, we have more and more sort of knocking on the door and and gaining momentum. Um, so definitely, without a doubt, this is um, this is very definitely geared towards towards um kbmi people but it is a great standalone tool for people who do not attend kbmi who enjoy just a good fellowship around the word of god um who enjoy uh um a good good bible study and that's really what we are are are, are, um, endeavoring to do here is to create a good daily bible study um and also reference to be able to go back. I always encourage people to go back over and over and over the episodes so that you're able to renew the mind. The mind is is a is a is a an interesting entity in that it needs constant influence to make sure that it goes in the right direction, that the your life will go in the direction of your dominant thought. And so this is what we do on this on this particular channel is we take what has been ministered within the KBM um, K- KBM sort of uh, space, and then unpack that. So we make it easy for you to we make it easy for you to meditate on it, because the more you meditate the Word of God, the more that revelation is going to be birthed. Revelation comes through meditation. It's not an accident. Revelation isn't an accident. Revelation is intentional. Um, it's an intentional progressive move through your life um, and through your soul and through your spirit, really through the spirit, man, and then it lands up in the soul. Um, it, that, that's how it happens, but it's intentional. It comes through meditation. So you, in your mind, in your soul area, the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. In that area, meditation will begin to occur. Anything you meditate on, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, whether it's 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 um, a, 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 a bad report that's come, fear of the future, faith, uh, joy, um, um, whatever the a potential relationship, whatever it is that's going on in your life, um, if you meditate on that consistently and constantly, then you're it's going to begin to create a, a particular revealed knowledge in your spirit it'll lodge in your spirit and from there you'll begin to do something you don't do things irrationally you do things based on rationale which has been meditated on in the psyche and then drop down into the spirit and then and then and then from there you just you just move into 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 doing things that's why certain of your behaviors that you think i don't know why i keep doing this it's because it's what's happening in the psyche in the mind and what you continually meditate on will determine what you continually do. That's why uh, Isaiah 55 says, my ways are not your ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. Um, so ways and thoughts, ways and thoughts are obviously very closely connected. 
So we have to deal with a thought life um, if we want to deal <laughs> with your actions. If we don't deal with the thoughts, then we can change your actions for a little bit, but you'll just come straight back to it. You'll, you, you know, we 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 sort out sort of what's going on. Oh, stop smoking! Stop smoking! Stop smoking! Or stop, um, stop, stop some of the bad habits that we're doing, and we might stop for a while. But unless we affect what's happening in the psyche, what's happening in your mind, the, you, you can stop for a while, but you'll come back. You just won't be able to have a sustained change in your life, a, a, a change based on a good foundation. Um, here's here's a good analogy: is that is that when when the people uh, when Israel was going through uh, the wilderness, they put up tents. They put up tents because they knew they're not going to stay in that place for a long time. Uh, so they built a tent, and then when the cloud settled and the, and the pillar of fire settled, then they, then they put up a tent and they put up the, the ark of the, the the tabernacle, or the tabernacle. They would put that up and put the ark in there. And and then they would build their tents all in the separate place, and they'd stay there for a while. But then, then when the when the cloud moved, and the fire moved, they'd have to uproot everything and pack up the tents, and and, and off they go again. But uh, you know that's why they never built a foundation. If they built a foundation in that place, and they're going to stay there. Now that's what revelation knowledge does. It it helps you not to build a tent, but to put down a foundation so that when you start doing something, you're solid in that, you're consistent in that thing. Or when you change something, you're consistent in that thing. So that um so that the change is not sporadic and it's not it's not inconsistent. It's a consistent change. It's a it's a change that you never go back. It's a change that's permanent. Um, but that's not going to happen without meditation on the word of God. And so this is why we this is why we drive towards meditation. We drive to and meditation isn't some far eastern um, new age thing that we we introducing to you. It's not. It's in the Bible. It's it's very 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 scriptural that we need to meditate to mutter under our breath to continually uh, ponder uh, on the Word of God so that. Uh, we are refreshing and renewing and revitalizing the thought patterns so that once we've thought about and gone over and over and over and over in our minds, all of a sudden it sinks down into your spirit. And that's called a revelation where it goes, oh, boom, I get it. I totally get it. And then the doing of that thing in, in, in particular is, is just a matter of course. It's not like I have to try and figure out how am I going to do this and, oh, it's so hard to, no, no, I just do it. Now, <clears throat> talking, about, talking about laying a foundation and, and, and we're, we're going to continue um, in, in the, tr the train of thought that we've been on since I think it was Friday or Saturday in our last episode, this is episode 44, and we're going to continue in the patterns of prayer talking about, um, we're going to be talking about um, the entering of the gates with thanksgiving. But, but there's something I want, to, I want to bring to your attention real quick. Um, and we're talking about the renewing of the mind. In fact, let's, let's go there very quickly um, because I feel it's quite important to, to understand what we're attempting to do here and what we are endeavoring to do. Um, here at at uh, at the um, this podcast, uh, let's bring it up here on on the uh, Sunday recap podcast. Romans twelve verse one and two. Romans twelve 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 verse one and two. Ek verman jylle dan broeders by die ontfermingen van God dat jylle lichaam dat jylle 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 lichaam stel as een levende heilige in an as a levende heilige en aan God welgevallige offer. Dit is jylle redelike godsdienst. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now verse 2 is what I want to get to. Vers 2 is waar ek eindelijk wil wees, en word nie aan hierdie wereld gelijkvormig nie, maar word verander dier die vernieuwing van jylle gemoed, so dat jylle kan beproef wat, wat die goeie en welgevallige en volmaakte wil van God is. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. We'll see that now. Do not be conformed. Um, 
en word nie aan hierdie wereld gelijkvormig nie. Ons is in die wereld, maar ons is nie van die wereld. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. Uh, we, we're stationed here, but we don't come from here. And so I don't want you being conformed. Ek wil hier, jylle moet gelijkvormig weet, wees aan die wereld. Moet nie soos die wereld opreid nie. Moet nie soos die wereld dinge doen nie. Ons moet anders wees Ons moet nie gelijk vormig wees nie. We mustn't be conformed. We mustn't take on the pattern of this world. We mustn't do things like the world does it. We need to operate differently. And so I just want to take a few moments before we get into today's uh, today's segment um, and to, into the material uh, that we set aside for today. I just want to take a few moments to deal with this because it's 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 um it's it's an issue. And the Bible says that we need to be transformed, transformed, we're transformed. That, that word transformed actually means metamorphosis. Uh, it means a complete change in, in where you operate by the renewing of the mind. Now, in, in, um, in Christianity, we have this concept, Matthew 3, of being born again. Okay, we got this concept of being born again. In fact, I just want to, let's take a moment to pray quickly, and then I'm going to continue. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word. We place ourselves before the word, to be taught by the word, and to receive revelation from heaven. And we'll give you all the glory, the praise, the worship, and the honor. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. You are welcome, you are welcome to lead and to guide this Bible study, so that your people can be blessed. And your people can receive revelation from you. You're the teacher. You are the mastermind. You are the mentor. You're the coach. You're the guide. In Jesus' name. Amen. So the the the, the we we have in Matthew 3 this this concept of being born again, of becoming a different person. Right? When we get saved, when we come into covenant with Jesus. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things, that old man has passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So here's, here's let me make an illustration for you. There's this person that walks down an alley, a dark alley at night, and he gets accosted by, um, by a thug. Um, a scully, uh, and uh, comes from behind him and puts a cold gun in his ribs and puts his arm around his neck and says, give up your wallet. And so he gives him his wallet and then thankfully he goes away um, with his life. So he decides he's not going to go through this again and he goes to self-defense classes. And he starts to train himself in self-defense. In fact, before he goes to the classes, he starts reading a book on self-defense. Now, and, and he learns his book. Now, if he had to go out into that dark alley again and get accosted again um, by a thug that wanted to take his money again, and he's just read this book on self-defense, and he tells Mr. Thug, he says, hey, thug, Hold on one second. I'm just going to read over here. Let me go over here to um, chapters. Wait, 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 wait. You got your arm around your neck. Don't squeeze too tight. I just want to quickly go over. Chapter 7 says how, what to do when apprehended from the rear um, with arm around neck. By that time, his money's gone. He's taken a whipping again. And he's, and if he's going to escape with his life, he'll be blessed. He'll be, you know, it'll be the grace of God. Um. So what does he have to do? No, he can't just go to uh, to read his book. He has to now go to self-defense classes. And once he's learned from the self-defense coach, he then needs to make sure that he understands what self-defense coach is teaching him. What's the third step? So he learns and then he understands. And the third step is to practice and practice and practice and practice and go over and over and over and over what he's been taught until the reaction is second nature. So when somebody does take him from behind or does apprehend him from behind, the reaction is second nature. 
what's happened is he's become, he went from being the person who was vulnerable to the person who can take care of himself in that area. He's able to, he's able to react as second age. He's become a person who can defend himself. That he's been born again in the area of self defense. He's been born again. He's transformed. He's been he's transformed from a vulnerable person who cannot defend himself into a person who is now able to defend himself. That's what it was to be born again, to be transformed, to go from. And how did the transformation happen? The transformation happened, yes, through repet, repetition and through practice and through the renewing of the mind. The mind had to be renewed. The body could do it. Definitely the body was able to do it. But the mind's reaction, the mind, the, the, the cognitive actions of the mind had to teach the body, do that. Respond, like, move like that. Do that and you'll be able to get out of this grip of this, of this, um, this uh, villain that, that has accosted you. In the, in, and you'll be able to give the villain a good whipping. Now that's what it means to be born again. It's we, we hear what's being taught to us, then we understand it. But we don't just stop there. Now we are pray a prayer. And now all of a sudden, I've entered into this place. Now I'm born again. And now my actions, my actions are not going to change unintentionally. I have to practice and practice and practice and practice until my mind gets renewed. Now... The reactions to what this world throws at me, the reactions to life are second nature. Now it's just second nature. I do this, I do that. It's just a reaction. It's a second nature reaction to what's happening to me. Now in those areas, I've become born again. I'm, 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 I used to be a person who was conformed to this world, that was in the pattern of this world, that was doing the things that the world um, is, was doing. But now because of the renewing of the mind, I've gone over it and over it and over it and over it so that my mind now reacts. Or, yeah, my mind reacts differently to what the world throws at me. Now I'm responding in a different way. And it's a second nature reaction. It's a second nature response to what the world is throwing at me. And now guess what's happening? I do things in God's ways. Why? Because I've gotten God's thoughts. I've gotten God's thoughts in that. And I've gone over it and over it and over it in my mind. I just want to quickly go back. This thing is cracking a bit. Just excuse me for the, the bad sound quality. Um, I'll fix that. I want to quickly just go to uh, that scripture again and just, just uh, Romans 12. And just um, just um, hammer down on that real quick so that we get it. And then we're going to just um, go on with um, very quickly in the last sort of segment, last sort of couple of moments of, of this episode, we'll talk about um, um, entering into the gates with thanksgiving and the patterns of prayer. And be not conformed to this world and word nie aan hierdie wereld gelijk vormig nie, but be ye transformed. Here we just bring that word up there, is to metamorphosize, met metamorphose, to transmute. We, we'll deal with that by the renewing, the renewal, the renewing of your mind. Now, I want to bring this up so that you can see it. Here at the bottom, we have our strongest concordance. It's vitally important to have a strongest concordance in your home or on a software somewhere. It's, it's strongest concordance gives you the Greek and Hebrew. It's, um, it is a, a very powerful dictionary, probably the most accurate that there is to be able to tell you what is the um, initial translations, the, the, uh, the original translations out of, out of um, Hebrew into English or Greek into English. Now, in the, in, the, in the New Testament of the Bible, we're talking about a Greek translation. So we're going to the Greek word of renewing. Watch now. I'm going to bring it up, make it nice. Uh, I'm going to fill up the page here. Renewing of the mind. Okay. This word, now we go, it's from this word. Uh, it's from the words uh, anachinosis. Anachinosis. The original is anachino, which is to renovate. So let's take it back now. So we're talking about renovations, right? Renewing of the mind, renovating of the mind. And be, let's, let's talk, let's say it like that. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renovating, the renovating of the mind. Now, 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 let's have a look. I'm going to show you how we do this. 
uh, let's stop the share here and I'm going to show you how we get an understanding. Let's have a look at what the word renovate means. Okay, I'll bring it up for you and it's, it's, uh, renovate is easy. You just go straight, to, um, you go straight to Google and find it out by the renovating of the mind. Let's have a look at it. There it is. And let's just go over there so you can see it. Dictionary, renovate. You just type into your into your uh, your search bar here, renovate, and it'll probably come up as meaning, renovate meaning. To restore something old, especially a building, but not, not just a building. To restore something old to a good state of repair. To restore something old. So let's then go back to the scripture. To restore something old and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the restoring of your mind to a good state of repair. Be transformed by the restoring of your mind uh, to a good state of repair. In other words, the original state that you come come into the kingdom with is not. It's not a good state. It's a broken down state through. It's been influenced. That's messed up the way that you think, and now you're coming in. And, and dealing with all this, and now we have to restore it. We have to renovate it. If you look at a building, we don't completely break down a building that we're renovating. We're just fixing the stuff that broke. How do we do that? We get into the word. We get into the word. And once the word is preached, we now understand the word that is preached. And then what we do is we practice, practice, practice. That's why I say, you know, you can't just listen to one of these episodes once. You've got to practice, 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 hear, listen, do, think, meditate over and over. Write it down. Get your notes. Put stuff together. Do it all together at the same time. And then you're just practicing and practicing and practicing. And all of a sudden what happens is, boom, now the mind is renovated. It's restored to a good state of repair the 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 revelations begin to settle into your spirit and now the the doing of the word has actually got a foundation we've restored things we've renovated things and things are now in a good state of repair the mind is in a good state of repair through the word of god you know i don't think we're going to get to um <laughs> to what i wanted to talk to you about because there's a scripture that's Popping up in my hand, if I can just get this microphone, just stop crackling and so on. Okay, let's have a look at one more scripture then, um, and then we'll uh, we'll see if we can add another episode in somewhere. I'm going to share my screen and go there for you. Go to Isaiah 55. We're talking about the renewing of the mind to God's thoughts. We want God's thoughts, God's way of thinking. Isaiah 55. Let's go there. <clears throat> Uh, we talked about this yesterday in church. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters, and he that has no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now, God is, this is how this starts out. O amal wat dors is, kom na die waters, en wie geen geld het nie, kom koop en eet. Ja, kom koop sonder geld en sonder prijs, wijn en melk. That sounds pretty good, but he's, he's going to tell us how to do that now, how to buy stuff without money. Oh, I got this thing that keeps on pushing me. I gotta, I gotta do uh, some episodes on how to get a job, how to get a car, how to get overseas travel, how to get all those things without money. Because that's exactly what the Lord had me do. He taught me early in my faith walk how to do those things. And if you want, if you want me to do that, just hit up something in the in the comment section, and I'll I'll teach on that. But it's just feel it feels like something I need to be doing. Verse 2, wherefore do you spend money on that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye, and the, eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Now, let's go down to verse 8. Vers 8. Want my gedagtes is nie jylle gedagtes nie. And yele via is nie my via nie spreek die here. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Okay, so thoughts and ways are deeply connected. Remember, we're talking about the renewing of the mind, the, the place of thoughts and intellect is happening in the mind. And we're trying to renew the mind so that the actions will happen. The ways change when the mind is changed. When the mind is changed, the ways will change. That makes sense, right? So, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts 
than your thoughts. So as high as the heaven is, but that's eternally, eternally separate. They're completely different. So his, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our thoughts. Again, ways and thoughts are connected. The way you think determines the way you do stuff. The way you think determines the way that you do things. However you think about a thing determines how you do those things. And he's saying, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and therefore my ways are higher. If you fix your thoughts, your ways are going to follow. For as the rain comes down, watch this now, and the, and the snow from heaven. So the waters come from the heaven and the snow, and they don't go back there, but they water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So now watch this. Like the rain comes down and waters the earth and germinates the seeds and gives bread for food and seed to the sower, so shall, and remember we're talking about the thoughts of the mind that affect the ways. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish that for which I please, and it shall prosper where to I sent it. So the word, it's like the word saying, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, therefore my ways are higher than your thoughts. But this is like the waters that come down and water the earth. They, they water the earth. They, they sort out the soil, make sure that things grow. That's how my word will be. It will not return unto me void. So what's he saying? The context, the, the, the secondary context is what? My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. My word will bring my ways and your ways together. My thoughts and your thoughts together. Does that make sense? I'll go over it again real quick. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. and Therefore, my ways are higher than your ways. But I don't want it to stay there. So what do I do? Like the rain comes from heaven and waters the earth and brings forth good things, so my word shall be that comes out of my mouth. It won't return to me void, but will accomplish. So like the rain comes down and brings forth good things, so my word will be, it'll also bring forth good things. What are the good things that it'll bring forth? My thoughts and your thoughts coming together now, if, so your thoughts will be elevated to my thoughts. Because what is the word of God? The word of God, a word is a revealed thought. So God's thoughts are being revealed through the word and when we renew our mind so that now i am the person that thinks like god thinks i become the person that thinks like god thinks and if i'm thinking like god thinks then i'm going to do like god does that makes sense right that makes sense so i'm gonna if if i can fix the way that i think through the word of god and i stay consistent in renewing renovating the mind until I'm thinking like God thinks, then I'm going to do like God does. But that doesn't happen without the word of God. Now, the, the, the initial, we talked about the secondary context, but let's have a look at the, the initial context, the number one context over here. What is the first thing we talked about? Everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters, to the waters no less, come to the waters if you're thirsty. And he that has no money, come buy and eat, yea, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend? Uh, okay, now look, he's saying, this is the initial context. Eat, uh, come and buy stuff without money. How? By elevating the way that you think and the way that you do through the word of God. The renovating of the mind eventually teaches you how to operate in faith. How to get things without having to 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 toil for it, to start living a life of faith, of believing God to supply all of your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus, so that we're not we're we're, we're producing by the way that we think, we're changing the way that we think, and therefore we change the way that we do. We're elevating the way that we think to God's thoughts through the word of God, and that way we start to do like God does. And he says, come and buy without money. Let me supply your need. Let me show you how it's done. Now, money is very, very important. Money is a, a vitally important part of our life. But he's saying, come and buy bread and milk. Come and buy that which sustains you. Or milk and wine and bread without, without money. I'll show you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it, and then I'll show you how to get the money. I'll show you. I can even I can get stuff to you. 
Somebody says, well, I don't think God's going to just throw bread down from heaven. He's not going to throw my groceries down from heaven. Maybe not for you. Maybe not for you. But in the wilderness, he did it. He put manna. He rained manna from heaven. He rained quail from heaven. He did it. The reason why it's not happening for you is because you keep on saying, well, I don't see how God could do that. Well, that's probably why you're not receiving it. That's why you're not receiving it. So this is why we take the time to meditate the word of God every day, every day, because we are renovating the mind. We're restoring to a good state of repair so that our thoughts are elevated. Once our thoughts become God's thoughts, our ways will become God's ways, and then we can start buying without money. I'll talk about that later as well, because because how do you buy? Buy implies money. It's, It's without money that you had to toil for. It's without money that you had to toil for. Toil is a completely different story. God doesn't want you in toil. God wants you working on assignment and him to supply your needs. You don't supply your needs. He supplies your needs according to his riches and glory. I hope this has been a blessing to you. It's been a great blessing to be able to spend this time with you teaching and and, and, uh, enjoying the word together with you. Um, We love you and we're praying for you. And we will definitely see you on the next episode. Bye for now.